Final Act. This is a game for two players. It is a game of tank warfare. Each player controls a group of tanks and each player tries to maneuver their tanks across the battlefield uh, to shoot the opponent, to survive the barrage from the opponent and you're trying to take control of an area on the other side of the board that your opponent is protecting. Of course you're trying to protect your own in the meanwhile. This is a game with very simple rules, uh, very uh, very linear, very accessible, um, and it has a very unusual look. This is a game that looks like no other uh, war theme game that I know, because the tanks in the game are made of wood, and they look like toys, and then they have little cute wooden shells that you place across the battlefield to mark where each tank is gonna hit. So it looks like a toy set. Uh, but like a from back then rather than a war game. So between that and the rules being so uh, short, I definitely expected this not to be a war game. I thought maybe it'll be a war theme game, you know, like Stratego for example. And so, well, I'm not a big fan of Stratego by the way, but I thought if it is within that family but actually better, oh, that could still be a good game uh, to add to my collection. But boy, was I in for a surprise when I discovered that there is much more war game in here than I expected, and, and that and that this game has any right to have, and yet it does. There is more war game in here than expected. Without further ado, let me show you how Final Act works. Many of the components of this game are made of wood, which is unusual for a war game or a war themed game, but I have to say these components look adorable. There's a vintage uh, feel to them, they look like toys, but then they work like game components. Well, this is what a tank in the game looks like up close, very simple, but also very evocative. There is a space here where you can place a fire token. The first time that a tank takes a hit, you place a fire token there. Oh, how amazing and good looking is that? And when a tank takes a second hit, then uh, the, the is destroyed, it cannot be used anymore. It is a rack, you can place the fire token like that. I prefer to make it even clearer by doing something like this or like this. So now that tank is an obstacle and the owner cannot use it anymore. However, the, po the point of the game is not necessarily to destroy all tanks of the opponent, but it is to reach the line of defense of the opponent with even just one tank. First player to reach the enemy last line of defense wins the game. So each player has one on their side of the board. Now, at the beginning of the game, you set up the board uh, secretly. Each player has an identical set of components, identical set of tanks, of heals, one that is three, that is three spaces long and two that are two, then you have a minefield and a lake slash swamp. And you set these on your side of the board. You, will, you may want to place the lid and the box in between because setup is simultaneous and secret. And especially for the tanks, the placement of the tanks is very important. As you can see, it can be quite different initial configuration. The, the tanks and the hills need to be placed within the first three rows of your side of the board. The other two elements can be anywhere as long as they are on your half of the board. So, um, how does a turn work? Well, each turn is divided in three phases. First, you plot, you program movement for all of your tanks. And your opponent does the same at the same time. Then players fire that each each time fire each tank fires, each tank is associated with a bomb or a shell. So, for example, we have here uh, C is for this one, and it's uh, it's important because this way you know exactly who fired what because the shells are placed physically on the board where you want your tank to fire them and this way you know exactly which tank already fired or which tank you place a shell for and also you can double check that the placements are legal. So first you program movement for your tanks then you place shells on the board from where they are before you execute movement 
and then both players execute movement. That means that when you are firing shells, you need to fire them where you think your enemy is going to be after they um, they move or when they move. So program your movement, place the shells, execute your movement. At that during that phase when movement is, is being executed, if you enter an area containing a bomb of the opponent because you program to get right there, boom, that counts as a hit. Luckily enough, the opponent is, the, the opponent is in the same situation. If the opponent enters an area where you place the hit, the opponent takes a hit. The opponent also takes a hit if you place a shell exactly where they are and they don't move. That is possible too. They decided to move and you had figured that out, then they take a hit and they, and they suffer consequently. So it is about where the opponent, uh, the time that you're trying to hit will be when it moves or does not move. So very interesting sequence. Now we talked about plotting movement, how you do so. You have this board, each player has one, totally neat. And there are two elements for each tank. So for 2B, for 2B, I'm going to use these two elements. A tank can move in one of, of, six, of six spaces. Oopsie. In one of six spaces. You cannot sidestep. You cannot sidestep like that. A tank can move here, here, or here, or forward, right, forward, forward, left. So these six spaces here. Also, you can keep the same orientation or you can change orientation. However, you cannot do crazy stuff like from here to here. Imagine just like an old clunky car. If you are going here and you want to change direction, there's only really one way of doing it. It's because you're moving backwards, which is boom. Or if you're going like this here. So, or like this, if you're going forward and turning, or like this. Because really, if you're doing a tank, you can just pull the brake and do like this, like it's an action movie. So, very clanky. And that also means that there's only a number of spaces where your opponent may be next time, unless the opponent decides to stop right where the opponent is. Oh, speaking of movement, actually, you can move up or down the hills freely, but what they do is they block line of sight, Minefields, you can only move, um, you can only enter a minefield from the central space and only in the direction indicated there. And lakes, swamps, they block movement, you cannot enter there, but they do not block line of sight. So for each element, for each tank, you plot where it will be and whether it will change orientation or not. If this other uh, element stays like this, then the tank doesn't change orientation, otherwise it changes uh accordingly to where you put it. For example, if I have plotted this, then this tank will be like this after movement. If I plotted this, it will be like this. I guess you get the gist. You can also choose to play stop, in which case the tank doesn't move. And then if the tank is turning into a rag, then you indicate that by doing so. So very simple, not many places to go, and especially with the terrain, well, it's kind of like a challenge, but that's precisely the point, not just to get where you want to go, but to do it in such a way that your movements are not too predictable. You don't maneuver yourself into a bottleneck uh, when it is dangerous to be like this. If no enemy of the opponent, no enemy can shoot at me, then I'm okay doing here. But of course, there's only a number of places where I may go from here. Uh, I may decide to stop. Actually, not like this. Actually, that doesn't restrict me. I don't know why I thought about that. But uh, if I'm here, well, then I don't know. I cannot get into those two places. So they're all, they can only be here or here or here or here. That's already only four places. Now, this tank is there. So uh, that's fewer places still. So you're trying to narrow down where the opponent might be and as you maneuver you are trying to get in a position to hit your opponent possibly be undercover if possible at all but so that you'll need to get out and so that means be unpredictable be in positions that will leave you a lot of options or where you can go 
and so that uh, voila so that it's harder for the opponent to pin down your exact position as for shooting as for shooting you can if you shoot straight right ahead of you you can shoot up to six spaces ahead um, luckily enough interesting here if you look at this side of the board each row is marked by a different color and these colors repeat um, every six spaces so I don't need necessarily to count one two three four five six although I can do so if I so desire but I simply see that I am in the green row if I'm shooting six ahead I'm gonna end up in the next green row straight ahead from where I'm shooting if you are on a if you're on a hill if you're on a hill you can shoot by one more so this is the blue column I look at the other blue column uh, row and I add one so I could shoot uh, I could shoot past that boom right there only I can because there is that tank there uh, there is that hill there now um, another so this is if you shoot straight uh, you may also want to shoot a little bit on the side maybe then you have to imagine you have to imagine a diamond a diamond shape or you can imagine that your cone of fire is like three then five then three then one no that doesn't work is three five seven five three one that's bad. Again, a diamond. Actually, I like to think of it as diagonally. Imagine going to go three spaces diagonal and then three other spaces in the other direction. That's how you form your diamond shape there, which is extended by one if you are on a, on a hill. So that is where you can place them. And again, you decide within that uh, area, considering only the areas where you actually have line of sight and are blocked by the tanks, unless you're on a on a hill, then you place your, I place that shell there, thinking that my opponent will probably get there. Just for extra measure, I'm gonna have this other guy shooting also next to it. I can't seem to find the shell for that one. Then, you know what, we're gonna have the C guy, C guy again. Look at the at the diamond. Uh, look at three laterally. So one, two, three. Uh, one, two. Well, I can still contribute and place a shell there in case that tank decides to go there. Of course, the tank may have another another number of options, but then maybe I have another tank that is also. Is also coming out and then there's other tank thing hmm what if it's gonna stop right at the barrage and I'm gonna put it there and then my opponent will execute their movement and their movement is they move here dang it or they don't move at all or they move here and here and that's a hit so very interesting idea there's also uh, timing is important since is about you fire and then you move each turn you can definitely go on top of a hill now now a plot movement my problem will be to move backwards I fire and then when it's time to plot them to execute the movement I go back like that um, of course that means if I'm right behind the other opponent may think that I'm gonna do so and they're gonna target they're not gonna target that waiting for me just to to peek out and get hit right in the face so this is the general idea you will want or uh, you will damage and possibly destroy enemy tanks but ultimately it's not that the point the point is to destroy is to reach the line of defense which also makes it tricky because sometimes you concentrate all defenses in a certain area and a single doo -doo 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 -doo, unassuming lonely tank manages uh, to be unnoticed and then by the time the opponent is close you oh shoot it's not again just a matter of like things being distant it really is a matter of being able to fire in the, being in the right direction this is a fairly safe position because this guy can't shoot at me now maybe this guy will do it like this waiting for me to come out but i'm thinking about that so i move back I'm like gosh darn it what's gonna happen next then i go here but i went there uh oh not good uh let me mm, move like this 
and so on and so forth. As you can see, there can be some pretty intense battles, some maneuvering around as, as, uh, as players are trying to, not just to get close to the opponent, but to get the right orientation. There are more tactical challenges and problems that you would expect from a game that looks so cute and adorable and it has components that look like toys. So is this a war game? Well, I'll be blunt. I think it is. It, why? Because it fits my very scientific definition of what a war game is. A war game is a game that when I play it, I feel like I played a war game. And that's exactly what happened here. Um, the themes really felt right. The captured shirt for shirt for shirt and for shirt and uh, from a bird eye view uh, in a semi after way or through after mechanics that yet, however, feel pretty thematic. Yes, it's very simple. You don't have there are a lot of things that are not taken into account the angle of penetration, the armor that should be thicker on some sides and then not as much on some other ones. But what do you lose there? You gain in playability, in fluid action. And you still have the basics. You still feel like, you know, they're getting hauled down or trying to hide behind an obstacle. You're maneuvering in ways that make sense. The opponent's here on the side and now you're like, ah, oh, dang it, I need to turn in such a way that I can hit it. But the opponent is also moving in the meanwhile. The delay that is caused by the fact that you are plotting your movement, pretty much also plotting your shooting and then movement is executed, means that you're always shooting at where the opponent is possibly um, possibly going to be. And I seem to remember reading somewhere, in fact, when, when you're in a tank and you're shooting and the opponent is moving, you don't shoot at the tank because otherwise you'll miss by then. You shoot where you think the tank will be. Um, all of these little touches give me enough of a theme that I felt that I was playing a very, yes, very simple um, semi-after representation, but it felt like a representation of, uh, of a tank battle. It is not based on a specific uh, time in history or a specific terrain. You can have a little bit of imagination. You can probably create your own terrain. Uh, it feels uh, it feels World War II, but uh, but it could also be something else. But it just feels like you are driving these clunky machines that can fire in mainly one direction with some with some leeway here and there. But still, uh, there are considerations to be taken into account. There is the bluffing of where you're trying to mislead the opponent about where you will be, there is reading the opponent, where the opponent will be, a lot of interesting considerations to take into account. I was also worried that that board will make the game uh, too complicated to play for what the game is, uh, plot, put your, your shells there, I was afraid that the pace of the game was going to be affected, but that didn't seem to be the problem. It was a fun, interesting puzzle I was, as I was plotting my movement to uh, see where I want to go and related to where you are and also related to where you might shoot. So I'm trying to mislead you, I'm trying not to get hit and yet try to get close to you or in any case to execute some maneuver that in the longer uh, run may get me there. Maybe I'm shooting down trying to, to eliminate some of your tanks while somebody else is moving in the background. I'm trying to use some tanks to create an opening for, for somebody else. I'm sending out a uh, a, a doom tank that I know will not make it and I know that's gonna be the case but again because I'm diverting diverting your attention towards that area again there is a sense of actually coordinating maneuver which is which is quite fun quite fun to to plot and then to execute and so maybe because of that, because you have just the right number of, of tanks to control, that you can move them individually and you can just scatter them around, but you can create some coordinated actions, probably because of that, because you most likely will get to think of them as groups that you're using for certain functions, uh, then programming them was uh, felt felt very natural and felt just re really a strong element of the design, not a pause from gameplay. Uh, if anything, paradoxically, moving the tanks is quote unquote the less the least interesting element. It's still pretty fun, but at that point you know if you're gonna get hit. But still, uh, 
the other parts uh, are where the decisions happen and then that is when the payoff happens which is the payoff of hitting the opponent or showing the opponent that the opponent plays five shells around that tank and your tanks didn't manage to avoid it by doing like you know, moving backwards or not moving or whatever it is that the one thing the opponent didn't think you would do and you did that so uh there's a bit of i would say yeah the payoff of moving at the point there are no decisions is automatic but that's when you get the payoff that's when you get to brag a little bit uh that's when you get to curse yourself for missing this or that opportunity or not realizing what the opponent was doing Point is that these three phases, although they, they look very different from one another, they are really organically tied. They, they flow smoothly one from the other and they feel very seamless. Um, I like the fact that the decisions are so simple and, that, and yet you can implement it in so many ways. It is as simple as put your shell there, but for each enemy tank there are a lot of different places where you may decide to try to target them you can concentrate fire everybody fights against that guy chances are we're gonna hit it but then the other people are strolling leisurely across the battlefield or scatter your shells but that of course means reduce chances of hitting each opponent for a game that's simple for a game with such linear rules uh such deceptively uh basic game this game turned out to have levels of decisions that I did not expect. Definitely much more than Stratego or other, you know, war themed, simple, pseudo para war games. It feels like a war game, therefore, it is a war game. That is, again, fits my very scientific, objectively correct uh, definition of what a war game is. This is not just a war themed game, it turns out to me, to me, to be, to me, a very simple, very linear war game, but a war game never did last because I was excited to see those tanks maneuvering around, seeing the combined movement, um, doing the firing, the hitting, and yes, even seeing my tanks that go, that, that burst into flames. So there was just a sense of theme and progression of action in the battlefield that I associate with a war game more than with any other type of game. So this may be a very simple, very basic war game, but in my opinion it is a war game nevertheless. And what's most, most important, it is a fun one. This is a really entertaining game. Interesting decisions, interesting interaction, it's all there, it's all in the interaction, it's all about the misleading and reading the opponent, coming up with creating maneuvers and changing your strategy as you go based on what the opponent does. Very nice flow of gameplay with a lot of interesting decision at every step of the way. Final act, this may be one of my of my two player games of choice one of those default things you know at the end of game night most people have left one friend's like why don't we play one more game this will be right there on top of the pile of possible games for that situation because i can teach it to one player very easily in 10 minutes you can separate right away and we're gonna have fun because this is in fact a very fun game final act highly recommended game